Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Sam Livecast. It's Friday, last day of the week, but really it's more important because this is the day <laughs> that we talk about what happened on Master Chef Wednesday Woo! night. And there he is. Woo! Wait, before we get to him, Max yeah. on the right. What's How up, brother? Doing? How are you doing, man? Great, great. Happy to be here. Nice to have you here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for telling your friends. We appreciate it. We do appreciate absolutely. it. We, we absolutely adore it. Mm -hmm. We love the shit out of that. that Hell you yeah, tell we tell people do. about us. Chief. Yo. MC4LYNN on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Our very own Master Chef contestant. There he is. Tallest one on the far right, ladies and gentlemen. Right around the Facebooks, guys. There the Facebooks. you go. It's the same URL, so facebook.com slash MC4LYNN. Do it. Okay, look at that picture of you. Go back to that. Yeah. You look a little um like a little nervous there. How can you tell? It's a thumbnail. No, no, no. You go over to the left. Your profile. Yeah, the profile pic. Oh, well, you know me, dude. I don't like being in front of the camera. I yeah, like I being know. behind one. <laughs> hey, man, I don't like being in front of I don't like being in front of a camera when it's really, dude? still when it No, no. I'm okay in front of this. Video, camera, no problem. Live he here all like day. This this Smiling. is my wheelhouse. Yeah. But when you put me in front of a still camera and I have to take pictures, really? I lock I lock up. I don't like it. I'm not well, comfortable. I'm not comfortable there because that's all fake to me. Like this is real, right? But if you say go stand over there and take a picture, I'm now like Oh man, as a photographer, I couldn't disagree with you more. Man. I don't I don't know what to do. Photography's real, dude. I hate it. It's and not real. It's really hard to get it. No, to it's look posed. Real. It's not real. No, it doesn't have to be posed. It is. Most of it's posed. <laughs> it's true. It, most of it is posed. <laughs> it is right. Most of it, yeah. All right. Let's get to it. So, look, here's what today is. Sorry, wait one second. Mm. You're not awkward at all. Oh, my God. <laughs> How long ago was that? Oh, A long time. I don't know. That's terrible. I See, I, look at that smile. That smile says, <laughs> I'm so, I don't want to be here right now, and I have to take these pictures. I don't like taking still photographs. I don't like taking still photographs. He can't speak in a still photograph. No, but <laughs> he, can't hear his, he can't hear his own voice in a still photograph. That's funny. No, I don't have to hear my own voice. <laughs> but for God's sakes, the first pictures I ever took, they were like, all right, go stand over there and take a knife. Like, you're cutting something. Like, But That's I'm not cutting. I mean, it's a fake shit. That's awful. I hope that photography moves away from that. Oh, so, so do I, with something friend. more so genuine. Do I, yes. All right, let's get into it. All right, so um, before we get into MasterChef, just let me say what we're doing today. Do you see this box beside me? Yes. Check that box that? out. Yeah. It's a cooler with the thermometer it's a cooler. on top. Let me move the thermometer. Okay, we're going to cook a steak today. And <laughs> yeah. the steak, the beautiful New York steak. What are we doing on the grill, in the oven? Cast iron pan right behind me. Mm -hmm. It's over there on the stove. It's coming out of that thing. Coming out of a cooler. Now you're thinking to yourself, oh, he's keeping it on ice in there. Uh huh. No, I'm not keeping it on ice. Oh. I'm keeping it in 130 degree water. Now let's just check the water. Hold on. I'll use my instant read thermometer. 120, 133.4. Right. That's not bad. That's a great temperature to have for meat. It's a good temp. That's medium right? rare right there. That's medium rare. Hell yeah. So we talked about sous vide here before. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We had a Mr. Sous vide. Is that what it's called? A sous vide supreme. Sous vide supreme. Which is Lynn's machine. Which is what Lynn has. Mm -hmm. I have one at home. It's great. Right? And, and, and here's what it does. Is it, you, here's the concept. The concept is you take a piece of meat. You take a protein. Chicken, fish, meat. You put it in this constant temp bath water that is set at the temperature that you ultimately want your protein to come out at. It takes you, a, depending on the size, the thickness, anywhere from, say, 45 minutes to a couple of hours to get it to that temperature. Mm -hmm. At the end of that time, we'll say, we'll call this 130-ish degrees. It's a perfect medium rare. But it's not very attractive on the outside. But all the way through, it's perfect. So then all you need to do is flash sear it in a pan, on the stove, however you want to do it. So you color it. It gives it a little crust, a little caramelization. It gets some beautifulness on the outside of it. 
But inside this piece of meat, this thick, it's perfect 130 all the way through. Right. Unlike when you take a piece of meat and you cook it on the grill, on the stove, however, and you end up, if you do it right, in the middle with a perfect bit right here, but there's always going to be some higher temp there and there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get away from that. This guarantees. And I did this with a whole tenderloin two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. No, last weekend. Yeah, it was for Father's, Father's Day. Day. I did it for Father's it was, Day. Cool. I took it a whole almost, tenderloin, I cut it in half, I put it in two Ziploc bags, I put it in 132 degree water for two and a half hours. And then I finished it on a super hot charcoal grill outside. Max, you take it from there. Let's just say that my it almost converted a vegetarian of 15 years. Right. <laughs> it was High that praise. good. High praise. It was, it was um, I think I remember hearing it described as eating butter right you know <laughs> a stick of butter uh, i can't tell you how many compliments i got yeah it was uh, unreal. and so here's the thing the machine is what 400 bucks then yeah three to 500 bucks three to 500 bucks this cooler let's see it oh, sorry. was free because it came out of my garage mm, nice. <laughs> i already own that that mother right there uh let me ask you something yeah. would you be able to use a smaller cooler and then it would cook faster or um no, the the temperature really of the water matter. is going to be the temperature of the water. Got it. Oh, I, this, this is kind of a cool idea. Think about this. Yeah. Go into a picnic. Get yes. one of those little coolers. Fill yes. it with 130 degree water. Oh yes. God. Dump all your meat in there. Go to the picnic. Travel there. Yes. By the wow. time you hit there, all you got to do is sear it up. and It's perfect. Wow. Picnic is served. It's That's perfect. Cool. And so here's the thing. My, t my tap water is somewhere around 135 degrees. Mm -hmm. So I filled it up with, you know, I mean, this much water. Put that much water in it. I threw some ice cubes in because I didn't want 135. I brought it down to about 131, 132. Put that New York steak in, which is what it was. And then twice now, I've boiled some water and put it in to bring it up from about 128, 127. I want to keep it right around 130. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too far under because it will sort of be underdone. 130 to 132, I'm going to be very happy with. And that's where it is now. So the only question, the question isn't how we're going to cook this, because I know what I'm going to do, cast iron pan over there, super hot. It'd be great. The only question is, what am I going to do with it for a topping? And I'm going to let you two guys decide yes. what that is. Yes. You're going to you let us decide. You guys will decide. You what get if we two disagree? Choices. Ooh. Well, then you'll, I don't well, know, then I'll break the tie. Or Kelly, <laughs> or Kelly will break the tie if she decides to join Okay, us. before we move right into MasterChef, yeah. I just want to continue my series on awkward Sam photos. <laughs> wow. This is the second installment, and there will be more coming, so don't By worry. the way, A, I have no idea where the hell that is, <laughs> uh, is, and B, more importantly, I don't own a Sam the Cooking Guy t-shirt like that anymore. My neighbor up the street has every one I've ever made because I've given it to him. Photoshopped. <laughs> I got to get them back from yeah. him. All right, enough about this. Let's Master talk about Chef. MasterChef. There he is. He's sitting right there. Last night was an interesting night on MasterChef, oh, wasn't yeah. it? You call it interesting. <laughs> because here's the thing. Because it's week uh, four? Yeah, it's week four or five. I can't actually It's week remember. four or five. I don't know. Up to this point, me, Max, Kelly, everybody knows has been saying, what the hell? Why is Lynn not getting any FaceTime? You've been like completely flying under the radar. Yeah. Well, dude, true. you got FaceTime this week. Oh, yeah. A lot of it. Yeah. But I don't think any of it was very positive. No, I mean. You had your troubles this week. I, I think I think MasterChef is really good at one thing. It's, it's really good at putting you on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Having that kind of drama really doesn't lend itself well to just being in the middle of the pack. You know, like so... For me, being kind of in the middle or the upper middle, like doesn't really lend itself to TV time. But when you're at the bottom or you're at the really the very top, exactly, you get a lot of TV time. And it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like Master Chef's been more about the bottom than it has been the top, especially at this stage. Of I think I think typically it is. I mean, they make a little fanfare over the over the people on the top, mm -hmm. but Jordan, yes, seems to get Jordan. a lot of attention. Seems to get a lot of attention. But I'll say this: you got your attention this week. And they made it look like you were going to get booted. Yeah. Because you, you sucked so bad at so many things. And, dude, know that I mean that in the nicest way possible, right? <laughs> okay. I love you. <laughs> okay. 
on many levels. But when they started putting the camera on you as much as they did, mm -hmm. and Gordon Ramsay started saying, is this the week you're going home, Lynn? Or is this it for you? That kind of thing. I knew it wasn't it for you. They lead you. They, they try lead to make you, you think. exactly yeah. what, you, what they you gotta do. You got to kind of an, uh, sit and watch the show and say, what do they want me to think is going to happen? It's exactly. It's a good point, you, Max. You look That's at it a like very it's a good decoy. point. <laughs> yeah. So we finally saw more of you. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, dude. <laughs> dude, please. Yes. And what we saw of you, take a look at this picture. What we saw of you. I'm on your computer. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, shit. Hold on. Sorry. I might have turned off my. Oh, uh, of course you did. Wait, were you capturing screenshots? Or yeah, 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 yeah. I think you yeah. might have been, Lynn. I might have been. I'm not sure. I'm Let's down find with this. out. I don't know. Was I? Uh oh. Oh wow. <laughs> and what we saw of you, dude, was you sweating like a fucking train. Yeah, man. Oh no, you actually missed that. That was a uh, Chrissy dumping a whole <laughs> beer on Lynn because she got mad at him. Oh my God, Lynn! Every time I looked at you, Oops, sorry. yeah, you were doing this, Max, with the black towel, doing this, the wipe. The wipe, like dripping off you. I mean, sweating on your oh, back. There, there's unbelievable. Be, there, there might be more of that to come. Look, I, I sweat a lot no matter what. I sweat yeah. when we sit back here, man. I'm like kind of like <laughs> a little right now. But look, it is it is what it is, man. It's it's outside. It's really hot. I sweat a lot as it is. Everybody's sweating, but I just tend to sweat more profusely well, than everybody else. they get the camera on you every time you do. Okay, so mystery box challenge. You got a bunch of weird foreign foods that nobody knew what mm -hmm. to do with. That was tough. From Russia, Japan. From everywhere. wherever, yeah. right? Crazy And, and what did you choose? What, tell me what you chose to do, because I've got the picture of it right here. I ended up doing a tartare with that mystery protein that it gave us. Yeah. It ended up being elk. Yes. Wow. I mean, go figure. It said something like beef steak on there, B-I-F-S-T-E-K. Yeah. And I was like, what language is this? It's not well, really dude, it was beautiful. Well. Max, can we see it? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Huh. There we go. Your plating is extraordinary. Oh, yeah. Outstraordinary? I like that. That's a new term. <laughs> Thank you. Extraordinary. I was Wait, actually what? really proud of this dish. No, you should have been. Oh. I'm sorry. What are these? Those are baby kiwis. Wow. Oh, that were in the setup? Yeah. They're, we it. had baby kiwis in there. Do you recognize everything on there? I don't know. No, are these, uh, are these uh, sea beans? Those are sea beans. Those yep. are really good. By the way, one of my favorite things. You eat one of these things, think super thin Think cross between um, an asparagus and a Chinese long bean, but but tastes like the ocean. Yeah, flavored by the sea. Oh, it's I great. love them. Yeah, I don't know. Is this looks like a little uh, baby red uh, uh, onion? What is no, that? No, that was actually a um, the Okinawa sweet potato puree. Mm. No, this thing right here. Yeah, in the middle. That's not puree. That's a drop of puree that I oh, made as round as possible. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? No wonder you got yelled at. That I at. made as round as possible. Come on. What? I think I had it in a squeeze bottle. That's why. Oh, please. And then that um, the ink is actually cuttlefish ink. So he he wow. dogged you for seasoning. Under seasoning, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Is that something they saw you do or they tasted it and then they said No, that? I mean, look. It, the thing with seasoning, and this is what we were talking about with like steak, right? It's, it's that... Like, how much do you want to season a steak? Well, you don't know until you try it, you know? Mm -hmm. Did you try it? I, I did. And to me, it actually tasted okay because I had so much other stuff going on there. I, I had seasoned that tartare with a whole bunch of stuff that we had from the mystery box. And um, one thing I thought it didn't need was salt. I thought it needed other seasoning, though, like wow. maybe more acidity. Yeah. So, I mean, Gordon could have been talking about that. Seasoning is just added flavor. It could be salt. It could be adding a little bit more acid. It could be everything. But... Look, when you eat a tartare, man, you want like what? You want like onions and chives. You kind of want like some kind of bright flavor in there. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have that in the mystery box. And I gambled and I lost. You know? So do you think you was that in your mind a risk putting raw beef on the plate, obviously? Yeah, but I thought it was actually pretty good. The flavors ended up coming out. I just I was disappointed that it was under season because mm -hmm. that could have been that could have been like my best dish. And it actually ended up being a flop because he mm -hmm. was like, it has no flavor. So, yep, it was a flop. Yep. Hmm. Uh, and you were upset. I mean, you could see that you were bummed when he would like call you out on stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, your head would be like, like it, that kind of thing. being called out for under seizing your food is like the worst criticism. you can Right. Get. I hear you. It just means you have no idea what you're doing. Right. Mm. Okay. So then we go from that. Then we go to the, um, the, uh, Lydia Bastianich 
uh, Anya Loti challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a legend, and she came to. She's a legend. She is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teach us how to make. She's pasta. a lot nicer than that asshole son of hers. <laughs> but still not very nice. Yeah. No, well, she has a little bite to her. I she, think she's got a little bit. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. A couple of the a couple of the people there were effing with what was clearly an Italian classic, and she told them that. Can I? It's a classic because it's a classic. It's not a classic because you put fucking cumin in it. Who was that? That was Howard. Howard, Howard. the California guy. Yeah. Um, bye bye, Howard. But does the fact that she raised such an asshole no, kind of you know reflect what? on her a little bit? No, no, no. I don't think he's really an asshole full time. Uh-huh. No. We're talking about Joe Bastianich. I think when they started this season of MasterChef, they said, Joe. You're going to take the part of the asshole. So we expect that you will throw plates in the garbage because nobody else does. Graham Elliott, as far as I can tell, he's never eaten a food he hasn't liked. The guy likes everything. He's got a couple of... He's got a couple... In fact... Yeah, that girl likes everything. I mean, guy. Wait a second. He made this one comment. I don't even remember what he was referring to, but he writes... I was giddy as a little girl. I was giddy as a little schoolgirl when you pulled that out. I just let me say there are so many things wrong with that <laughs> sentence, and not the least of which is the fact that he calls himself a little schoolgirl because, dude, if anything, you're a big schoolgirl. <laughs> it was in reference to Jordan's lemon meringue pie. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Which looked aw- awesome. It looked awesome. Everybody on on the top floor when he pulled that thing out, we were like. Well, he's going. He's he's staying. He he's staying. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he did good. He did good. But and then wait, let's not let's just not forget this. Hold on, let's all look at this. Lib uh, Lynn's short, messy, plated short rib annulati. Oh, they were right. They spelled leak wrong with charred leak, and they did. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that <laughs> until Someone now. Someone on Twitter pointed that out. But yeah, that's embarrassing. That looks terrible. <laughs> that's very embarrassing. Fox, wow. you got to be better than that. Wait, what's more? Wait, Come on. hold on. What's more embarrassing? This or, dude, your plate. The plate this is man. not your work here. No, it's it's dirty. It's got stuff all over it. The, were the, you just like at the last second of that? Were you just like coming out of the end of the challenge? You were just throwing shit on to just to make it happen? Yes. And here's here's what I mean. I'm not really upset at this because it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Well, it doesn't matter because you're still you're still in the show. I'm still in the show, but yeah. The the, the silver lining in this whole thing, I guess, is yes. what I'm gonna say, is that when Gordon came by and said like your filling looks like cat food. Yes. I tasted it and he was absolutely right. Yes. So people say Gordon doesn't know what he's talking about. He usually does. Wait, did you say it looks like cat food or it tastes like cat food? He said it looks like cat food, and then when he tasted it, it probably was the same. We tasted, <laughs> it, we tasted it together, and as soon as he said that, I literally took my food processor, and I shoved it off my station into my bus bin, and I started over with 20 minutes left. But so are you saying what's in that and your latte was not uh, the result of what came out of your processor? No, no, no. What I have was I had more short rib um, stuff, and I, I basically diced it up by hand because I ever had a meat grinder. So I ain't going to pull out a meat grinder right now with 20 minutes left. So I just diced it by hand. I put it into a piping bag with um, right. some ricotta cheese and seasoned it and then piped it out. Right. And that's why I'm not saying that's why it looks like the that, way, that, that was that was problematic. Why. Right. You were rushing. I just you, don't know how to make annulotti. You didn't know how to make <laughs> annulotti. But OK, I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. OK. And please answer this honestly. OK. You missed Lydia Bastianich's hands-on class on how to make annulati, correct? I it have, wasn't I, hands-on, but you missed her demo. Yeah. Did you have a card somewhere that told you how to make annulati? Absolutely not. Nothing? No. So you went right completely from scratch on making that. So annulati is something I said on the show I always wanted to make. And yep. it's because I've had it a few times at a restaurant, and I've read in a bunch of books on how you're supposed to fold it. It's actually quite an ingenious piece of pasta. Right. Like you... Take that pasta sheet out. Well, apparently, you don't out. didn't read the Lydia Bastianich book on how to fold fucking onion. And the funny thing is, because you blew it. The the way that she folds it is completely different from the way that I've I've read yeah. about it in like some really like nice cookbooks. And now I'm just starting to think, okay, there must be a couple ways to make it, and or I just I mean I really do suck at it. So it takes some finesse, and you but, have to be able to practice on it. By the way. Um, it's easy for me to sit here and criticize you making annulati the wrong way <laughs> because course. I've never made it. I don't. I couldn't. I could I could maybe make pasta if I had to, but I wouldn't really have it down completely. Yeah. There's something that um, there's something called the law of diminishing returns. Yes, and 
Jilly and I were talking about this the other day, and I think that making your own pasta might be one of those things. Yeah. Like, obviously, the end result is probably, I mean, if you do it right, it's going to be great, but I feel like the amount of time it takes for the amount of reward you get in the end, I guess, personally, I might not think it's worth it. Yeah. Um, I only disagree with that because when you, for the specific item of pasta mm-hmm. when you get really good at it it actually takes very little time in fact oh, yeah I think that it makes sense i'm talking yeah way less time than running to a store getting some pasta like it's actually incredibly simple mm-hmm. um but it it i guess in the broader sense it takes practice and that takes time yeah i mean for somebody like me who's never done it before it would take me hours to try and figure out how to make some pasta where i mean and i'm sure it would assuming i did it right it would turn out great but <clears throat> you know what i mean hey lynn i just sent you an email Okay. You should check that. All right. Um, here's what we have to do. I've got a 130 degree New York steak sitting beside me. Let's just oh. look at it again because it kind of freaks me out that it's in here. That's going to be so good. Wow. All right. But here's the decision that has to be made. And then I'll talk about what I just sent you then. I'm going to cook it in the pan. I'm going to do it my standard way. A little olive oil, kosher salt, pepper. It'll be done. But I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting today. So I'm going to give you two boys a choice of what I'm going to do. Okay? Right. Let's hear it. I'm either going to, once it comes out, top it with a, a um, cast iron pan sear combination of tomatoes and garlic, balsamic vinegar, and some parsley. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Little, little baby cherry tomatoes that I've thrown in the super hot pan, thrown around a little bit, a little oil, a little balsamic, a little garlic, parsley done, or a chipotle butter. Oh. Chipotle, Ooh. lime, Ooh. butter, salt, uh, I, little I onion, chipotle that kind of butter thing. For yeah, me. I was going to say, I'm going to have to do the chipotle butter. Oh, and, and right, we're going because chipotle. I think we've done the tomato thing before. Have we? The... Uh, uh, maybe maybe we it. have. I don't know. We did it on top of skirt steak. I remember that. Wow. So oh. then that's good. But good. Right, I'm chipotle glad. Butter. I was ho- I was hoping for chipotle butter too. Yeah. All right. Cool. Because I think it'll Let's be it. I think it'll be delicious. And there's nothing like taking a hot steak off the off the grill or pan or whatever, mm-hmm. and giving it a couple seconds to rest, and you flap. Uh, you, you just hit a little. Well, that was a that weird was move. crazy. That I don't know weird. why I did that. I <laughs> felt like I did some acid. Like I was <laughs> I know. You just twenty, and I just did a hit of acid, man. What the hell's going on? Um and the butter starts to melt and whatever's oh, in the butter, it, it's herbs, it's garlic, it's chipotle, it's good. All right, so we're going to do that. So before I do that, just let me say um, June 29th is a Saturday and uh, there's an event at UTC, University yeah. Town Center. I will be there on behalf of my best friend's Fixtures Living. Mm-hmm. It's an event called Uncorked Wine Walk. And they're doing this thing where you're going to be able to walk around the center there's going to be a bunch of wine. We're hoping that we're going to be able to see these pictures. There you go. You're going to be able to walk around. You're going to be able to s- taste food from four or five different places. Mm-hmm. Try 10 different wines. And look, wow. Fixtures Living Own, Sam the Cooking Guy will be there. Wow. I'll be making a shrimp thing that you'll be able to come up and you'll be able to try it. I will make it. My, we'll be right there handing it to you. It's 10 bucks to get in. You Bargain. get 10 10 samples of wine, you get four or five different types of food, and Michelle Branch is singing. Oh, I cannot believe that. I don't I know who saw... Michelle Branch is. What? You don't know who Michelle Branch is? I mean, I know Branch the name. Is? I can't think of a Michelle Branch song. But you song. definitely know who Brandon and Leah, Leah are, right? I do not know who Brandon and no Leah are. Brandon Leah I only is. know, oh, because of the stupid Kardashians. <laughs> it's the fucking Jenner son. It's the fucking Jenner son. The older one. Wait, him? Yeah, that's Bruce Jenner's older son. Oh, what? Brandon Jenner? I'm almost positive, yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh-huh. I've right, seen them right. on the show with the wife, and so, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Anyway, proceeds go to San Diego Botanic Garden. It should be a great event. Great event. Lots of fun. Can I you? will be there making... Come. Anyway, you get information, fixtureslivingcom uh, or on their Facebook, facebook.com forward slash fixtureslivingcom mm-hmm. They're awesome. The event should be lots of fun. They're expecting like 500 people, so I think it'll be a good thing. And I will be there. Come hang out. Be lots of fun. All right, I'm ready. I got to cook this. Ready? Ready. Let's go.
All right, so I've got the cooler here, and here's what we've got. That just sounds disgusting. It does. Just <laughs> a little dripping out of the tub. No. Check this out. So I want you to see what has happened here. It looks uninspiring so far. This looks, feels pretty good. Uh, let me just bust this guy open. Hold on. Sorry, pardon my, pardon my back. I mean, that's the funny thing about sous vide. Nothing about it looks good until you cook it. There's nothing good here. So here, if I put this, wait, I need some paper towels. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't really thinking. Uh, you, you can't cook this thing soaking wet. <laughs> that's true. Okay, so look it. There's a steak. How's it look? Appetizing? Oh, lovely. I Not in take the a least. Right now. Who, who wants that? I don't want that. But it pushes. Don't look, Mom. It pushes like it's a like it's a perfect medium rare. Yeah. It just so, looks like an alien. It looks terrible. <laughs> nobody nobody would want yeah, to eat that. Gross. But inside, we're gonna go with the theory that it's really good right now. So here's all I'm gonna do to it. My standard steak setup. In spite of the fact that my dear friend Ethan tells me that this is not what you're supposed to do. Salt. And it's fairly thick, so don't go light on the salt. Right? Mm -hmm. Lots of fresh ground pepper. Yeah. This side. Shoot, that is so important. Season both sides of your food, people. Oh my yeah. God, yeah, it I know. It makes a huge difference. You know what, I, I, people, the funny thing is people are scared of seasoning and I think people are scared of heat too. Two things that we're gonna do now. And check this out, so this pan has been on now for at least a couple of minutes. And, a, and a sort of a semi-decent way to check is if you throw little drop, droplets of water in here and they don't do that, how close can you get in there, Max? Without us. Okay. No, careful there. <laughs> yeah, oh no, I mean like camera close as opposed to physically close, right? Do you see what the water does? Yeah. It beads up and it, it evaporates. It beads up and it evaporates. Like that. There you go. That's a good idea, right? That's what you want. You want it that hot. Boom. Okay? Okay. So, it's almost there. I've got this. Let's remember what we're doing here. This is completely cooked all the way through. All we're trying to do is give it some beautiful color on the outside. And we're gonna do that right now. Dude, I can't wait, man, you know. I've got this fat layer, this fat cap across this edge here that we're gonna actually throw into the pan and let it try and melt a little bit to put some flavor in the pan first. Look, it's already starting to separate. Come over, here we go. And I'm gonna need the fan on because the fan is gonna be super important right now. I'm just trying to put a little bit of layer of fat in here to help cook the it's this to cook this steak in. And now that. Wow. So it's gonna get a couple of minutes that side till it looks pretty. A couple of minutes the other side. We'll take it off. We'll let it rest. It smells steaky. The fat already is doing some beautiful stuff in here, but now we got to make this little compound butter. So while that's doing that, this might be difficult for me to do because I have to give that some attention too. So about a quarter cup of butter in this little bowl. I need some chipotle, and I keep chipotles like this out of the jar. I need a, a knife, and I'm going to take one of them, one big fat chipotle. Come on, big boy, like this, right? And I'm going to chop this up really well. But I got to actually check this because, come over quick, Max, because wow. nice color, right? Perfect. Right there. Back to the chipotle. I want about a tablespoon of this, which is pretty close to one of these guys. We'll 
throw that into the butter. Nice, all right. I need just a couple more things. I need some lime juice. I need a little onion, which I got here, some uh, yellow onion and something. I got this, lime juice, oh, cilantro. I need a little cilantro too. Yes, I should have done this before I took the chipotle out because now everything's sticking. Look at the <laughs> trouble I'm having. Why did I do that? Oh, no. Oh, my God. It's okay. It's going to be mixed in there anyways, right? It's going to get mixed in, yeah, but it's just making it hard to cut. Okay, the cilantro goes in. Get that steak. Steak, 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 shit. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. A little bit of right. grease fire there. Damn. Look at right? So here's the, God, I hope I didn't ruin this. So hold on, let me just finish this. This, this, I need some lime juice. I gotta leave that fan on for one more second. Nice. Hold on. Lime juice, there. Lime juice, there. A little salt, salt, salt right here. And a little bit of this onion. Well, I gotta do this fast. I want this on the steak right now. Careful. Right, this goes in. Everybody say hello to the mother. Okay, here we go. This is important, Max. Okay, onion, cilantro, lime juice, a little salt, chipotle butter, right? Yeah. And now we'll just take this. Boom, right there. Oh, right on top. Right on top. I can't do this. Oh, gosh. You okay? I'm fine. You're going to make it, dude? I'm going to totally make it. Yeah. Totally make it. All right. Now, here's the thing. What we've now made is called a compound butter, right? It's a classic little thing. It doesn't matter what goes in the butter. It matters how you use it. And so if I had wax paper, which I don't, I would take a sheet of it, so I'm using parchment, and I don't really need this much. So watch, while that's resting, I'm gonna take this butter. Sorry, try and get some shots here for you. And I'm gonna do this, okay? Right here, this delicious, Chipotle, lime juice, the whole thing, right? And now watch. Now I wrap this here. I am okay. so confused. So you see what I've got? I've got what now is now like a little tube of this butter, yeah. right? I don't need these ends anymore. And I don't need this end. Okay, so this is gonna go in the freezer, just like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now I've got compound butter anytime that I want it. And when I wanna use it, I'll take it out of the freezer, it'll be hard, I'll cut a slice off, I'll let it come to room temperature, I'll throw it on top of a piece of steak. The point is, is that this, like the way it is now, can live in my freezer for a couple of months and be completely fine, yeah. completely fine. Compound butter. It could be garlic, it could be herbs, it could be chipotle, it could be anything you want. It could be nothing but lemon juice and rosemary and it would be delicious. Wow, that'd be really good, wouldn't it? Just that would lemon be juice super and rosemary, good. Right? Compound butter. 
It's an interesting, it's an interesting um, uh, idea that makes it, look, it's one of those things that you can keep around that you don't have to do any work for because you've already done the work once. And who doesn't like a little cheat like that, right? Absolutely. That's good. Who doesn't like a little cheat like that? I'm getting that steak whiff. Is it coming the back, back there here. for you? All right. Well, we're going to cut it open now. We're not going to wait anymore. It's enough already. We're not going to wait 20 minutes for this thing to do its thing. And look at what the butter's starting to do. Look, normally you want to let a steak rest for... Wow. For what? God, look at that shot. Normally you want to let a steak rest for... Oh my God, it's dripping off. 10, 15 minutes, right? You know, normally, but then this isn't normal because we've kind of already cooked it, you know? Yeah, there's nothing normal here. I want to get right down my, here uh, cut. my favorite, I want my slicing knife that I can't, damn it, I can't find it. That's not it. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Right, so we're going to put this big boy up here. Oh, maroni. Oh, wow. Jesus. God, why did I do that? That's okay. If you're on Master Chef, you would be yelled at right now. Oh Fortunately, I'm not. So here's <laughs> here's the inside, right? The money shot. How is it gonna look? It's gonna look like that. Jeez. Perfect. Perfect all the way through. Look at that. And the juiciness here. The thing is, once you cut it open. Oh my gosh. It actually gets a little bit more pink because it's like the first time it hits the air. <laughs> wow. This? Oh my God. Please, somebody. Oh yeah. Somebody help me here. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna help you. That's great. And you know what? What it's not is too uh, spicy from the Chipotle. It's humble. Kelly, you want a bite? Come on, quick. She doesn't, she's not with us very often. Look, how's that? Nice. Per well, nice. Really? That's all What's you got? on the top. I'll get it. Little chipotle butter, but it's not spicy. Little onion, cilantro. Yeah. Is that crazy good? That is really good. Here's the one thing I wanted to have. Just a tiny little bit more salt. And that's my thing these days. I've been seasoning after the fact. And I think it's really important. I think it loses a lot of seasoning as it goes, and it totally benefits from That's better. Now you're talking. All right. Wow. Uh, cooler sous vide. You can do this at home. We did it right here. Make a little compound butter. You digging that? <laughs> Apparently she is. Thanks for hanging out with us. Next week, you ready for this? It's tequila week. Oh, yeah. Tequila week, he says as he pulls up his pants. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a good weekend. Wait a second. Lynn, where are you Monday? I'm going to be at yep. Urban Sauce on Monday. Can at where? Wait? Urban Sauce is a great restaurant in San Diego. We know Matt we're Gordon's gonna do been here. A little meet and greet there. Yep. And it's going to be awesome. So I want you guys to all come out. If you guys are feeling like doing a little meet and greet with some master chefs, me, Bree, Savannah. Check out Lynn's uh, Twitter and Facebook. Oh, yeah. MC4 Lynn on Twitter and on Facebook. Information will be there Monday nights. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a good weekend. Don't eat shitty food. Promise? All right. Thank you. See you.